Formula One engines can go bang occasionally, sometimes just by grinding to a halt with some smoke, and sometimes pretty spectacularly with a fair bit of fire. And we saw this recently with Carlos Sainz in Austria. But what causes these failures? Well, we're going to wrap up the three most common failures and explain how you can spot the telltale signs in a race. So you can now have a good idea about what's gone wrong before everyone else does. So let's get into it. Firstly, we're not going to cover the hybrid stuff in this video, purely the mechanical bits about the combustion engine. And because they are so insanely complex, there are probably hundreds of different components that could indeed fail. So we are simplifying it down to the three main areas, and they are bottom end failures, top end failures, and turbo failures. So the bottom end are things like the crankshaft, the rods, bearings, and sometimes even the crankcase. Think of it like anything below this line. Then there is the top end, and that's the stuff above that line. Pistons, valves, gaskets, and the head of the engine itself. Then the turbo. Well, we know what that is. But what's most interesting about this is that they all show different signs after they fail. You can often get a good idea of which it is by hearing the failure, or even looking at the smoke coming out the back of the engine. Now, before we get into the three main failures, we should touch on what causes them. Because often, it's the same things. It's just that one part lets go before another. Normally, things fail because of overheating, vibration, lubrication issues, excessive load, among other things. And because F1 engines are so highly strong, if things start to stray away from that perfect balance, things go wrong very quickly. Your road car is tuned for reliability. So if it overheats from time to time or runs a bit low on oil, then it's normally okay. But F1 engines aren't designed for situations like that. They're purely about maximum power for the eight races they're made to run for. So we have scarves to go over each of these types of failure with us, because here's the man for stuff like this. Having been around the F1 paddock for over 20 years, he's seen more engine failures than all of us put together. Probably the biggest and perhaps also the rarest failure is a bottom end failure of the engine. And we can sort of identify this area as you know, the bottom half of the engine, which consists of the, the sump and the crankcases. You therefore have the crankshaft spinning around on its bearings. You have the con rods on their bearings spinning around. And when something fails here, it tends to be a fairly big catastrophic failure. Again, quite typically it would be something in the crank or the crank bearings failing. Um, everything wants to stop and seize up. And then when it does, everything just wants to part sideways out of the crankcase, sometimes actually vertically down. It's been the case in the past that a bottom end failure has actually seen a com rod push into the circuit its surface underneath and leave a big scrape in the ground. We can recognize this and it's, it's quite typically different from what you see as a fan looking at it on the TV. Uh, a bottom end failure won't create lots of white plumes of smoke out the back of the engine. What it tends to be is lots of oil and flames and sort of dirty smoke coming out very low at the back of the, what we maybe describe as the coke bottle area, the cooling exits. Um, and this can normally quite quickly turn into a fire as well. That's normally a pretty fast failure and fairly catastrophic, often caused by crankshafts, conrods and bearings. You can normally spot them with lots of dirty smoke low down from the car. So moving on to the top end failures, and these can be pretty different. This area is things like the pistons, valves, the valve return system, which in F1 engines isn't a spring, it's a pneumatic system, as well as the camshaft itself. It also includes the interface between the head and the cylinder block, which on a road car includes the head gasket. But because F1 components are so precisely machined, they often only use an O-ring. The failure mode that you tend to see as a fan seeing this is a huge plume of smoke coming out the back of the car, billowing white clouds from the exhaust, but it doesn't have to be purely from the exhaust. It can actually break out of the cylinder head and come out the back of the engine cover. So when you see that large billowy failure, uh, failure that tends to be the water coming out with the rest of the uh, oil and bits of engine uh, from a failure in that area. Again, immediate loss of all power, the engine is scrapped. You can spot top end failures as it's pretty catastrophic, with big plumes of white smoke, either from the exhaust or from the top of the engine. Then finally, there are turbo failures. And if you're a Ferrari engineer, you might want to listen in, because it's an incredibly fine balance with these things. And you know, if you think of the stresses that they're under, you have the, you know, the two um, impellers spinning 
in Formula One up to 125,000 RPM. Uh, I know other turbochargers can go faster, but yeah, it's still a significant amount of force of these things spinning around. And in order to be able to do that, they need to have perfect lubrication and perfect bearings to keep that all working. And if anything should fail in this, then you have a slightly different sort of failure mode than we've seen with the bottom end or the top end of the engine, because a turbocharger can fail quite slowly. Um, or it can fail immediately and catastrophically. And it's quite interesting to look at how that happens uh, from the outside. So when the turbo does fail, and as I say, it tends to be something in the lubrication and bearings, uh, the turbo wants to stop, it wants to rattle around, and very that, may, that may means that the impellers are impacting the casings, parts start to explode, fly out of the casings, and quite typically, this means that there's a huge loss of oil almost immediately as you get this big catastrophic failure. So again, from the fan, from the outside, there's a couple of things. If you're listening to the onboard, you will actually hear um, the, that the white noise of the turbocharger, the whistling, suddenly drop, um, normally associated with some graunching and grinding noises. Um, then from the outside, watching on the TV, you will start to see the telltale puffs of blue smoke coming out of the tail of the exhaust pipe. And again, this isn't like huge plumes of smoke. It's not like the top end failure where you'll get billowing smoke. You'll normally get sort of, yeah, a few puffs and then a consistent puff as the engine then winds down. But the main thing is that the turbo failures are often due to a lack of lubrication, which often means there is oil around the hot exhaust. So as in science's failure, you also get fires. Now, these aren't as dangerous as fuel fires as oil tends to burn a bit slower. So as long as the driver can get out of the car in a reasonable time, they are normally okay, but it's still pretty dangerous. You can spot these with white smoke from the exhaust and you can also hear it as you can hear the turbo rattling and stopping and sometimes with fires up at the top of the engine cover. The failure can often be slower meaning that the car rolls to a stop. So those are the main three but if we look back at the failures that have happened this year the only real failures have been in the back of a Ferrari. The Red Bull issues were in fact fuel related not full engine failures. And in my opinion these were both turbocharger failures. Particularly in the case of Charles Leclerc, we've got all the evidence there. You had the telltale noise of the turbocharger spooling down and then grinding and coming to pieces, followed by the smoke out the back of the car. And it was a very kind of slow cruise down failure um, because obviously the engine's working, it's just not being pressurized by the turbocharger. And then we can have a look at uh, Carlos Sainz uh, failure in uh, Austria. Subtly different, we first saw a kind of a cruise down failure rather than an immediate cutout of the engine loss of power. If you actually look, the bodywork was only broken um, just behind the turbocharger, quite high up. But you can see the exhaust pipe coming out the back of the turbocharger was in one piece. So that hasn't blown to pieces. And again, that gives me the evidence to suggest that this is purely a turbocharger failure. You should check out this video where we get into the data about who has the most powerful engine this year. It's really interesting. Thanks to Scarves for bringing us the insights as ever. You should follow him on Twitter and I've put a link in the description below. Thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.